welcome to TV30, a production of the Government's Information Service. I am Jolene Bisset Joseph. The global consumption of paper and paperboard totaled 408 million tons in 2021. Consumption is projected to continue rising over the coming decade to reach 476 million tons by 2032. Cutting down on paper use is one of the easiest ways to lower, lower your carbon footprint. In fact, in today's technologically advanced world, there's almost no excuse for purchasing excessive amounts of paper and ink cartridges in organizations. Not only is this practice wasteful, but it's actually costly for wallets and the planet, as paper consumption and pollution contributes to global warming and climate change. But how do we, in fact, go about putting paperless or, um, processes within our organization or paper light processes as well. Well, to help us understand how we might be able to do that, today I'm joined by Kevin Williams, who is the CEO of Simple Innovations and Solutions, and that's a company who quite recently aided the Anglican School in going paperless, and who may have a few tips for us to aid us in finding out how we can do it also. So first of all, thank you for joining us today here, Mr. Williams. Oh, it's my pleasure. Okay, <laughs> brilliant. So now, before we get into the whole paperless um, um, dialogue, tell me a little bit about your company. Your company is in a, um, Simple Innovation and Solutions, right? Is it a new company? Yes, it has been in existence from since 20, 2019, um, partnered with three international companies, and I am the authorized reseller for the entire Caribbean. Okay. And we specialize in tracking and management systems, so we can track any items such as documents, vehicles, items in the warehouse, even containers, and even personnel on, uh, on the work site, and such things like that. Mm -hmm. So we are very innovative when it comes to the type of systems that we have, because mm -hmm. the systems are catered to your specifications. Okay. It's not a one-size-fit-all type of system. So we will not give you the same system that we would probably give the bank, depending on the type of criteria that you would need. Okay. So that's why it's a very intensive, intensive process where we need to find out exactly what your needs are so that we can actually give you the right solution for it. Okay. Now, was it always a case of, um, this is this something that you always wanted to get into, this kind of a company, or is this something that you just saw a niche in the market, so you decided to well, do something like this? Well, it started off where I ended up trying to um, start off a different business, mm -hmm. and then there was an investor who ended up coming to advise me about this process. So I made approach to one of the companies that, that we, we were planning to partner up with, and then things ended up falling through, mm -hmm. and then about a year later, the same company ended up, ended up coming to contact me, mm -hmm. and they told me that they found that I have like the drive and the type of motivation needed to really continue with the business. Mm -hmm. And from that point onwards, we've just been trying to work together to try to educate especially the St. Lucian, the St. Lucian public about the importance of, of going paperless, especially when it comes to expenditure, because it can increase productivity and it can increase accountability, but mm -hmm. it can decrease expenditure. And that's one of the things that we're really trying to, to educate, educate mm -hmm. the public about. And it's, it's coming along little by little, so we're just, you know, taking it one day at a time and hope, hopefully with this, this program we can really get the word out and show the true importance of what it means to go paperless, especially for St. Lucia because for me personally, I've, I'm born and raised St. Lucia mm -hmm. and I always believe as if like St. Lucia can be one of the top countries in the Caribbean. And with that, I would really love to have St. Lucia be be the foundation for the for my company mm -hmm. before I actually branch off to some of the other islands. So that's that's one of my goals. <laughs> Brilliant, that's great, that's great. Now let me tell you now, um, let me ask you rather, the paperless system that was introduced in the, into the Anglican school, tell us all about that. How did it first come about that, that it was even a, 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 something that would be happening between the school and, and your company? So um, how it started was that I was doing an online presentation mm -hmm. 
with um, Sladero about my company. So then I was approached by a, a, a young lady named Viola Calendar. She ended up asking me if it's possible to actually do a system for the Anglican school. Mm -hmm. But she said right off the bat, the Anglican school doesn't have any money. Okay. So I end up talking with my team and we end up trying to see if we could get a second vendor that would be willing to actually do it on a pro bono basis. Mm -hmm. We end up getting one in India. His company's name is Vini Pro. Mm -hmm. So what he assisted us with was to develop a system whereby when it comes to the, the students' profiles, when they enter, for example, if they enter term one or term two, then the information will be entered onto the database, mm -hmm. and then they would have access to that, to that information from their computer, from their phone, or from their laptop. Mm -hmm. They also had a registry book that's dated back till, um, till the 1900s. Okay. So, we saw that it has quite a lot of, of historical value in it. So I, since, since I couldn't use my original team, because with my original team, we would pretty much have all of the equipment we would need in order for us to actually embark on this. Um, we had to think of, of other ways in order for us to actually you know, digitize that information. So I ended up approaching um, the Ministry of Education they end up assisting with the digitizing of the registry book. So now that bit of information is digitized and can be and has been saved on a secure location for the for the Anglican school. Mm -hmm. So if anything were to happen to the book, they already have they already have that information digitized. And I also have that information saved. So just in case if anything were to happen to to, to their storage, mm -hmm. then we also have a backup for them. So we went about it in that process. I handed it over about um, three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I showed the principal and as well as um, anybody else she, she wanted to be using the, using the system mm -hmm. to enter the, enter the information for the students. The Ministry of Education played a very big part mm -hmm. in the type of information that they wanted to be stored onto onto the student's profile. Okay. So for example, they wanted to have uh, information such as um, the doctor's, um, their doctor's name. They wanted to have information such as if they have any allergies, um, also if they had any medical conditions. So once they click on the student's name, they would have all of that information showing up mm -hmm. and it's very easy for them to, to actually get that information. They also wanted us to Added, add information such as if they were to come from a from another school mm -hmm. at a certain point in time, mm -hmm. they also have that 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 information mm -hmm. available for them to enter. So, it's like I like I said, it's it's a a process whereby it's very intensive, where you need to really dig deep into what exactly that the client wants, mm -hmm. and then we try to deliver it as best as we can in the most um, effective, effective manner. Okay. How long uh, about does it take to actually go through a process like that? Because as you said, that's a lot of information. Um, and I understand it's mostly like digitizing, like you, you do a lot of scanning, data yes. entry. So, yes. I mean, that, that must really take yes. a lot of time yes. to yes. do. Yes, it takes, it takes okay. a lot of time. Now, mm -hmm. the, the advantage with the company that I'm partnered with mm -hmm. is that they have over 40 years experience when it comes to the scanning, to the scanning industry. Okay, yeah. So, one of the things that I have learned, especially when it pertains to um, the scope of the work, mm -hmm. depends on the type of equipment that you use. Because obviously, when you have to deal with, with scanning of paper, mm -hmm. you need to ensure that you um, look at the quality of the, of the document. Mm -hmm. So they would have, um, for example, Group A, whereby Group A is, is a perfect sheet mm -hmm. where you'd be able to actually scan it. Group B would be if the edges are just a little bit curled or okay. if there are a few staples. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then group C would be the more difficult um, documents whereby more than 50% is probably faded or it's like really dry rotted. So it's very difficult for you to actually read or even with the, with the handwriting. Now, mm -hmm. our, our device can actually um, translate 
any handwritten handwritten document. Oh wow! And that's one of that's one of the advantages okay. that we have with ours. Mm -hmm. As well as we were not only limited to documents, we can also do audio. We can also do video. So we have quite a lot of of variations when it comes to to our system. When we, when it comes to like storage, mm -hmm. now with that bit of information, you will be able to to store it um, three different ways. So you have the option of actually storing it on your servers. You have the option of having it as a web-based a web-based option. So you'd you'd store it on on the the website in particular, or you could store it on our cloud-based cloud-based system. And so one of the ad one of the the advice that I give to all of the clients when it especially pertains to the paperless is that it's always best for you to have two versions of storage. Mm -hmm. So for example, recently um, you know that you had the, the incident where you lost some of the information on your servers. Mm -hmm. We would always advise that if you are going to, to, to store information on your servers, you should also back it up onto our cloud as well. So okay. if you were to lose that, lose that information for any reason on your servers, you know it's already backed up. So we right. always, always give them that option. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to the scanning, like I said, with the type of equipment we have, we have specialized scanners, mm -hmm. so whereby depending on the amount of sheets that you need to scan, mm -hmm. our scanners can scan 10,000 sheets in one sitting. Wow can scan 50,000, can scan 100,000. Okay. So it can greatly decrease the amount of time you would, you would normally have when it comes to actually scanning the documents. Okay. So like, for example, if we have like a million sheets that we have to go through, mm. if we were to use a normal scanner, it will take a couple of months in right. order for you to actually, a couple right. months going into a year for you to finish, yeah. finish that. But with our system mm -hmm. and with the type of equi equipment we have, we can pretty much finish it in about two months or two months or less, okay. depending on the amount of, 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 equip of equipment that we would need. So like I said, it's, it's very intensive yeah. and it's also very exciting because it's, it's, a, new, it's a new avenue a new venture that that's something that St. Lucia can really look forward to and can really put us on a higher level than most of the other other countries because for example what happened in Dominica mm -hmm. they were pretty much devastated right. when it came to the to the the hurricanes that end up decimating them mm -hmm. and since after that they have completely completely embrace the paperless the paperless okay, concept okay. so and even with some of the dominicans who i have talked with mm -hmm. they also agree that before they were a little bit sluggish and a little bit hesitant to actually go forward with yeah. that mm -hmm. but then after the hurricane they realized the true importance of actually right. saving data because knowledge is power so yeah. as long as you save the data that is the most important thing okay, because cool. with that you're able to continue your business even without having a physical a physical um, um, establishment to, to to be present so mm -hmm. that's one of the advantages of it and we're hoping that we can get St. Lucia on board for this because I know deep down in my heart that St. Lucia can really be one of the top countries can, instead of being a, a developing country, mm -hmm. we can actually be a developed country. That's, that's my dream for St. Lucia, so okay, I'm hoping. <laughs> okay, great, that's a great note. Well, that's a great note for us to have a, a short break. <laughs> so do stay with us. We'll be back very soon. The Department of Finance has introduced the Electronic Government Procurement System, EGP. The EGP system has many benefits for stakeholders involved in government procurement. And government seeks to adopt a strategic approach to its purchasing process. Electronic government procurement improves efficiency of procurement and enhances data capture. The EGP is innovative and will automate the sequence from notification, receiving and evaluation of submissions to final contract award. It improves communication between vendors and government agencies provides greater transparency and builds confidence in the vendor community through increased access to information. To participate, vendors, suppliers and contractors must register on the electronic government procurement platform. 
EGP, improving efficiency and transparency in the acquisition of goods, books, and services. Welcome back to TV30. I'm John B. St. Joseph, and I'm joined by Kevin Williams, and we're talking <laughs> paperless and paper-like processes. Um, so, Mr. Williams, we were talking before about, about the project with the Anglican School. Um, how do you feel about other schools taking on this? And do you see that there is some hope that maybe other schools might want to do so in St. Lucia? Yes, there, there is a very huge opportunity for, for other schools to actually partake into that. Mm -hmm. um, originally, I graduated from Compre, okay. and I know that they do have quite a lot of documents that really needs to be digitized, mm -hmm. and we, we need to understand where we are in the world. Mm -hmm. We are very susceptible to natural disasters. Right and the schools are also very susceptible as well. Mm -hmm. So if the school isn't really um, taken care of for, for whatever reason, mm -hmm. it, it poses a, a threat to any information that, um, that is, is stored there. Mm -hmm. So I honestly believe that if, for example, the way that I see it for the schools is that they could have like a complete database mm -hmm. whereby each one of the schools has access to their own database, mm -hmm. but the ministry is able to actually access that information right. yeah. um, any way that they, that they see fit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for example, for individuals who want to get um, their information from their school, for example, for a job, or if they want to apply for a university, mm -hmm. it would be very easy for them to simply just go online and simply get the information and just email it to, to their university. Brilliant, that yeah. is, some, that yeah. is something that we have the ability of actually doing. Mm -hmm. And like I said, the Anglican, the Anglican program was done with a, a separate vendor, mm -hmm. but with the original vendor that I am I'm partnered with, with the original company that I'm partnered with, mm -hmm. we have a, a system that can pretty much cater for all aspects when it when it pertains to the school. Not mm -hmm. only for the school's um, profile, um, mm -hmm. for the student's profile, mm -hmm. we can also do report books. Okay. We can also do SBAs as well. So mm -hmm. we would be able to store the store the information or store grades grades when it comes to the SBAs or final or end of term term exams. We'd be able to actually store that store that information okay. for um for the teachers. Um, we might be able to even go so far as to do the um, teacher's schemes for them. Mm -hmm. So they would be able to show exactly what they're planning to teach the students for, for the week mm -hmm. on a specific type of program, program that we set up for them in particular. Mm -hmm. And it would be much easier than for them to be having to, you know, write everything down. Because my mother has been a teacher from, for more than 30 years. Mm -hmm and I have seen her having to write up the schemes and everything like that mm -hmm. um, every week as well as writing up um, test papers and, and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So that is something that I grew up with mm -hmm. and I've seen where um, technology can really assist her mm -hmm. on that part. Mm -hmm. Now with that there will need to be some level of training mm -hmm. but that is where the advantage comes with the company with the company that I'm partnered with. Right. Our system is very, very straightforward. Mm -hmm. It's not no rocket science for you to really figure out exactly what you need to do. Mm -hmm. We can try to also cater for, for certain individuals whereby, okay, if they prefer to do things on the, on the form, mm -hmm. all they would need to do is like, we could do it in such a way whereby they could fill it out on the form and then just simply scan it into the system. So that's, that's, a, that's a way that they can feel comfortable that, okay, they can still do it in the, in the process that they're comfortable with, but with technology, they're able to store it much, much easier and much quicker. Mm -hmm. So that's one option that we could actually give to the schools. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's something that is really needed mm -hmm. um, for now, because especially with the, with the situation with COVID, right. you would be able to know, for example, if they have certain outbreaks, so for example, they had the outbreak 
the outbreak recently with the foot and mouth disease, yes. you would be able to put that information on the system stating mm. that, okay, at this point in time during the term, we had this situation, this mm. medical situation, mm -hmm. and what was done to rectify the problem and everything. So all of that information is stored. Mm -hmm. So if anybody were to come in afterwards, they would simply just have to put like a certain date in particular in which the incident ended up happening and all of the information is just right there yeah. on, uh, on the screen. So yeah. there's quite a lot of, of opportunities yes. when it comes to, to having that type of system for the schools. Mm -hmm. And what we're hoping for is that with the Anglican school being a pilot, that we can show the advantages of actually going paperless for just that one aspect mm -hmm. and show them all of the possibilities of, of, of implementing it for the schools to make it much more streamlined mm -hmm. and make it much easier for not only the students but also for the teachers. Right. Because when you have a happy teacher, yeah. you, you have a happy set of students Very that are true. willing to learn and are eager to you know, go yeah. beyond what they actually believe they, mm -hmm. they could be. Because mm -hmm. if I had to tell you what I wanted to be when I, when I was first in school, uh -huh. it, it was a completely different aspect right <laughs> okay. now. So. Okay, all right, okay. And you know what really stands out to me is the fact that you approach this from the schools first. Because I, I find this kind of wonderful that um, we talk about climate change and, and how it's affecting us here and our carbon footprint not even being yeah. so big, but at the same time, we are actually susceptible to all the things that climate change change you know yes. is actually sending out there um, and the fact that it's in schools first I find it's really kind of like a teachable moment because yes. when the students see this is the kind of processes that's being implemented within the institutions they are yeah to me that's actually teaching them about stuff like that as well right yeah that's yeah, that's yeah. very true because yeah. they're, they're able to see the connection between that's correct, yeah. between you know normal work mm -hmm. manual work right as well as technology mm -hmm. and how well that both of these 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 two aspects can actually coincide coexist right. with each other yeah i believe that is a moment that that is really needed because a lot of the children right now they are pretty much tech savvy yes yeah you will have like a two or three year old on a phone or mm -hmm. on a tablet and you swear as if like they were literally born with it so if you can actually you know grasp that opportunity mm -hmm. and really put it into the educational sector mm -hmm. you can you can achieve wonders yeah yeah very much so very much so now we've been talking a lot about um the paperless systems um because this that's what i really wanted to talk to you about here today yeah. but you mentioned there's some other aspects within that so other things that your company offers as well just take us through a couple of those things as well for me please in more detail yes yeah, so for example we also do um warehouse tracking systems right so for example with marcy we could implement a system for them whereby they would keep track of all of their, their retail items mm -hmm. and we can put it in such a way whereby they would be able to know exactly when the item is close to expiring. Mm -hmm. We can also put in notifications mm -hmm. to let them know that, okay, when it reaches to a certain level, you can be notified if you would like to reorder that, um, that item. Mm -hmm. we, would, we could also put it in such a way whereby um, if it's if it's needed for a promotion mm -hmm. that a uh, merchandiser can simply state hey we need that need that um um those items to do for a promotion so it okay. can simply be be transported to them right then and there mm -hmm. so there's quite a lot of versatility when it comes to the warehouse tracking warehouse mm -hmm. tracking system we can also do it for um frozen items as well um we recent we tried to to have a few discussions with some of the retail um, companies down here. Mm -hmm. Some of them showed a, a, a little bit of interest, but mm -hmm. it's they're still a little bit hesitant okay. when it comes to to the technology. But mm -hmm. it is something that can really improve when it comes, especially to to the frozen meats. Mm -hmm. um, and also, for example, items such as in warehouses, such mm -hmm. as um, MNC, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. or like with Home Depot, mm -hmm. when they when they have to do like the stock taking, the stock taking can literally take a couple of hours instead of a couple of days. Okay. So that is some of the advantages of of the warehouse tracking system. Okay, we also have um, our vehicle tracking system, where you would be able to track a fleet of a fleet of vehicles if if you if you see fit. We you you would be able to have all of the information. You'd be able to have the information for um, the driver, as well as their driver's license, their driving behavior. Mm -hmm. You would also be able to know, for example, like you said, with the carbon footprint, yeah. you'd be able to find out um, the CO2 emissions from the vehicle. You would also be able to know um, fuel consumption. You would mm -hmm. also be able to give them the, sh the best route needed for whichever okay. delivery that, that they're, they're meant to, to take. Mm -hmm. You can also do something such as um, geotagging. So for example, if they were to reach to a certain area to drop certain items, mm -hmm. you can simply just tag that area. And once they pass through, mm -hmm. pass through that designated area, mm -hmm. then they would be able to get notifications on the system that, hey, um, vehicle A has come in, they spent about 20 minutes there offloading whichever items that they need to be offloaded. While that item is being offloaded, you could have the warehouse tracking system just keeping track of all of the items that has been delivered or all of the items that have been taken out. Okay. So our systems can pretty much coincide with each other and it's something that really helps helps when it comes to the productivity for the for the business because therefore you would be able to know every aspect of the business you'll not have to micromanage everything mm -hmm. everything is right there right there clear as day where you can simply just log on to your phone or log on to your to your laptop on in your office and you'll be able to see exactly everything that's going on okay. in your business all right brilliant <laughs> well that sounds fantastic however we have run out of time <laughs> i really want to say thank you though for coming in and, and discussing with, with us the whole um paperless system the, the the work the project you did at anglican school i really do hope that is the way that that we go because it was a fantastic opportunity as you said for saint lucia yes yeah very much so <laughs> so again thank you for joining us mr williams and all the best Oh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Hopefully we can do it again with some much better news. So okay. let's look forward for the future. <laughs> Brilliant. And thank you for joining us here at GIS for TV30. However, right now it's time for me to say bye-bye. <laughs>